Did you know that the DNA of the Arab people is like a vast library of human history, holding secrets that stretch back tens of thousands of years? It's true, Arabia isn't just a desert crossroads. It's one of the oldest meeting points of civilizations and migrations on Earth. From the first humans leaving Africa to ancient kingdoms, Islamic expansion, and even modern diaspora, Arab DNA carries the imprint of it all. In this video, we're diving deep into what makes Arab DNA so unique. We'll explore how ancient migrations shaped the Arabian Peninsula, the surprising genetic ties between Arabs and neighboring regions, the impact of empires and trade routes, and the hidden diversity within Arab populations today. So if you've ever wondered where the Arab people truly come from and what their DNA reveals about the past and future of humanity, stick around. This is going to be fascinating. When you hear the word Arab, what comes to mind? For millions, the word Arab is tied to Islam, Quran, and a shared language. But the truth is, Arab identity is far bigger than geography, bigger than religion, and far older than most of us realize. Today, more than 400 million people across 22 countries call themselves Arab. From Morocco in the west to Oman in the east, from Syria in the north to Yemen in the south. And beyond the Middle East, Arab communities live in Europe, America, Africa, and Asia. For centuries, historians argued about Arab origins. Religious traditions told one story. Medieval historians told another and modern politics shaped even more ideas about Arab identity. But in recent years, science has entered the debate. Archaeology and ancient remains are revealing a past that is both surprising and complex. To understand the Arab genetic story, we need to go back. Not just a thousand years. We need to rewind human history by tens of thousands of years. Around 85,000 years ago, Archaeologists discovered human remains in Saudi Arabia, a single finger bone buried under the sand. When they tested it, they realized it belonged to one of the earliest humans to leave Africa. This was shocking. It meant that Arabia wasn't just a barren desert. It was one of the first stepping stones of human migration. So some of the first humans who walked out of Africa didn't go straight into Europe. They came here, to Arabia. They followed rivers and grasslands that no longer exist. They hunted, fished, and lived in a land that has now turned to desert. But the story doesn't stop there. Over thousands of years, Arabia saw waves of settlers. Some came from the Levant, the fertile lands of modern Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel. Others came from Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization in Iraq. Still others crossed over from Africa, across the Red Sea. Arabia was never isolated. It was a bridge between continents. Africa to the west, Asia to the north, India and beyond to the east. By the Neolithic period, roughly 10,000 years ago, Arabia was home to early farming communities. Families lived in permanent houses. They herded animals. They grew food from the land. This marked the shift from nomadic life to organized societies. Ancient rock art in Saudi Arabia shows hunters on horseback, camels, and cattle. It shows that these people lived rich, complex lives, and many of their descendants are still there today. This is the first shocking truth about Arab origins. The Arabs are not newcomers to their land. Their roots stretch back to some of the earliest humans who ever left Africa. Now, let's turn to the science. Because DNA has given us a time machine, it lets us look into the deep past, beyond written history. Scientists have studied thousands of people from across the Arab world. They've looked at Y chromosomes, which pass from father to son. They've looked at mitochondrial DNA, which passes from mother to child. And they've studied entire genomes, billions of letters of DNA code. The first discovery is continuity. Many Arabs today carry lineages that go back 20,000 years or more inside Arabia itself. This means the people of Arabia are not just migrants from elsewhere. They are among the oldest continuous populations in the world. One of the most common lineages in Arab men is called J1. It spread with tribes across the peninsula. Today, it's found most strongly in Yemen, 
Saudi Arabia, and Bedouin groups. It's a genetic fingerprint of deep Arabian ancestry. Another lineage, J2, tells a different story. This one came from the Fertile Crescent, the land of the first farmers in Mesopotamia and the Levant. As farming spread thousands of years ago, J2 spread with it. You can still see it today, especially in the Levant, Iraq, and parts of the Gulf. Together, J1 and J2 show the twin roots of Arab DNA, one ancient, born in Arabia itself, the other from the farming revolutions of the north. But that's not the full picture. Genetic studies also reveal African connections. For thousands of years, people crossed the Red Sea between Africa and Arabia. Trade, marriage, and migration left their mark. In fact, some Arab groups today show strong African ancestry, especially in Yemen, Oman, and coastal regions. And then there's the East. The Indian Ocean trade brought contact with South Asia. Merchants and sailors moved back and forth for centuries. Small traces of Indian DNA can be found in parts of Arabia. What does all this mean? It means the Arabs are not a single origin story. They are a mosaic. Deep ancient roots in Arabia itself. Connections to the Fertile Crescent and Mesopotamia. Bridges to Africa and threads from Asia. And here's the most shocking truth, despite all these mixtures, Arab DNA still shows a unique, ancient core. It's not erased by outsiders, it's not replaced by invasions. The Arab genetic fingerprint is still there, one of the oldest continuous signatures on Earth. So when scientists say they've uncovered the shocking origin of the Arabs, it isn't one simple answer. It's a story that stretches back tens of thousands of years, and a story of continuity that makes the Arabs one of the oldest living peoples on the planet. The Arabian Peninsula has never been a closed world. It was always a crossroads, a bridge between continents. And for thousands of years, people moved in and out, shaping the genetic story of the Arabs. Let's start with the north. The Fertile Crescent, lands of Mesopotamia and the Levant, was one of the cradles of civilization. This was the home of the first farmers and the first cities. Trade routes connected the two regions. Caravans carried goods, ideas, and people across the desert. Over time, waves of migration from the north blended into the Arabian gene pool. This is why we see genetic ties between Arabs, Syrians, Iraqis, and Levantine people. Now look to the west. Just across the Red Sea lies Africa. And that crossing is not as difficult as it seems. For thousands of years, small boats carried traders, herders, and families back and forth. The Arabian coastlines, Yemen, Oman, western Saudi Arabia, absorbed African lineages. In return, Arabian DNA can also be found in East Africa, especially in Ethiopia, Sudan, and Somalia. Then, there is the East. The Indian Ocean has always been a highway of trade. Arab sailors connected with Persia, India, and even further, reaching Southeast Asia. Spices, textiles, and precious stones moved across the seas. South Asian genetic traces are still found in the coastal populations of Arabia. And finally, the South. Yemen and Oman formed the southern gateway of Arabia. They connected the interior desert with the ocean. Ancient kingdoms rose here, powered by incense trade frankincense and myrrh, the perfumes of the ancient world. These kingdoms linked Arabia to both Africa and India. All these migrations left their fingerprints in Arab DNA. North, south, east, west, Arabia was never cut off. It absorbed influences, yet it also kept its own deep roots. That's why Arab DNA today is a mosaic. It carries echoes of neighbors, but also an ancient Arabian signal that never disappeared. Now we arrive at one of the most dramatic turning points in Arab history, the rise of Islam. In the early 7th century, in the city of Mecca, a new faith was born. Within a century, Islam had spread across continents, and with it, so did the Arab identity. Arab armies and traders carried more than religion. They carried language, culture, and families. From the deserts of Arabia, they expanded outward, into Syria, Iraq, Egypt, and beyond. By the mid-7th century, 
Arab rule stretched from Persia in the east to North Africa in the west. By the early 8th century, it reached Spain. This was not just conquest, it was transformation. Genetics shows the results. In North Africa, Arab soldiers and settlers intermarried with local Berber populations. This created a unique genetic blend. Today's North African Arabs carry both deep Berber roots and Arabian ancestry. In Spain, the Arab presence lasted for centuries. Although most Arab DNA faded after the Reconquista, small traces still remain in Iberian populations. In the East, Arabs mixed with Persians, Turks, and Central Asians. Trade routes brought even more mixing. Arab merchants married into local families as far as India, Pakistan, and Southeast Asia. This is why Arab genetic influence can be found along the coasts of India and even in the islands of Indonesia. But here's the key point. The Islamic expansion didn't erase local peoples. It layered Arab DNA onto existing populations. That's why Arabs today are so diverse. A Moroccan Arab and a Gulf Arab don't look the same. Their DNA tells different stories, but they share a cultural identity shaped by language and faith. And underneath it all, they carry pieces of that ancient Arabian core. So, what scientists have actually discovered about the people who call themselves Arabs in the 21st century? The first finding is continuity. Despite invasions, migrations, and empires, the genetic signal of ancient Arabia is still there. Lineages like J1 are strongest in the Arabian Peninsula, especially Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and Bedouin tribes. This shows that many Arabs are direct descendants of people who have lived in Arabia for tens of thousands of years. The second finding is diversity. North African Arabs carry strong Berber ancestry. Levantine Arabs share much with Syrians, Palestinians, and Lebanese, who themselves are tied to ancient Canaanites. Iraqi Arabs show links to Mesopotamia and Persia. And Gulf Arabs often carry African and South Asian traces from centuries of trade. Genetics can tell us about ancestry, but it cannot define culture. Arab identity is not only written in DNA. It's written in language, in shared history, in religion, and in the bonds of community. Arabs are both one of the oldest continuous populations on Earth and one of the most blended. They are ancient and modern at the same time. They carry the story of humanity itself, a story of deep roots and constant movement. So when scientists reveal the genetic origin of the Arabs, they're not telling us about a single tribe or a single place. They're revealing a mosaic of humanity, a story where Africa, Asia, and Arabia meet, a story of continuity, mixing, and survival across the ages. And that story is still being written today. If you've enjoyed this journey through the origins of Arab DNA, let us know in the comments. Have you ever taken a DNA test and found surprising Middle Eastern roots? Share your stories, we would love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more history and ancestry content. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. And until next time, goodbye for now.